What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, difficulty is up and prices are down and it's looking pretty rough out there and I want to talk about it. So let's take a look at coin market cap real quick. And you can see, let me refresh this here. Neox is down almost 14%, Elephium's down about 12%, same as Dynex, Conflux, Radiance down 10%. Octa's down 10%, Nex is down 8%, Flux down 8%, Caspa down 6.5%, Ergo down 5.5%, and if you take a look at the week, uh, we've got a couple that are still up, so Neoxa and Elephium are still up, Radiant is still up, but, you know, look at this, Nex is down 28% for the week, Caspa's down 26% for the week, and profits are looking pretty slim. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at 13 cents per kilowatt hour. I think that's what most of you are probably paying out there. 4090 is going to get you about 72 cents a day in profit, but what about a typical 3070? 3070 is going to get you 11 cents in profit a day. Let's change this back to 13 cents. Uh, Nexa is going to get you $0.09 cents a day in profit, China at $0.09, cents, Chlor $0.08, cents, Conceal $0.08, cents, Elephium $0.06, cents, Caspa $0.05, cents, Radiant all the way down to $0.03. Cents. And, you know, you combine high difficulty with low prices, and that's what's going to happen. And it's pretty unfortunate, but, you know, the reason difficulty is so high is because all of these mineable coins pumped 300 percent in the course of about two weeks so we got people that are turning rigs back on and possibly farms that are you know considerable size farms have been turning back on and so you know you take a look at nexa as far as difficulty is concerned we're at an all-time high and let's take a look at some of the other ones meow coin also at an all-time high neoxa i don't think it's quite at an all-time high but it's it's getting back up there and let's see what else chlor is definitely going to be at an all-time high radiant is definitely going to be at an all-time high and let's take a look at just a few others so caspa obviously we assume that it has asics on the network now and difficulty is definitely at an all-time high and by the way I, I haven't talked about ASICs on CASPA at all yet, and there's good reason for that. Um, I kind of want to gather my thoughts on the subject, and I'm also waiting for Red Panda Mining to actually physically receive this in the mail. Now, you guys are probably watching this video on the 20th. For me, the time of recording is the 19th, and Red Panda Mining is supposed to receive it on the 21st. So as soon as we have confirmation that it is real, then... I'm going to make a pretty detailed video about my thoughts on the situation, but let's let's move on. Let's continue to talk about difficulty here. So what else do we have? Octospace is a new coin. I covered this a couple of weeks ago. Difficulty is at an all-time high, but in my opinion, is still pretty low compared to what I expect in the future. And the reason for that is because, number one, I don't think many people are aware of it. Number two, it is ETHash meaning there are some ASICs that are on it. However, not all ASICs are compatible with Okta. So you can see that the Jazzminer X16 is compatible with it, but the E9, you know, the, the older E7, I mean, there's, there's ASICs that are not able to mine Okta right now. Now, I would expect that, that probably changes in the future, but I could be wrong about that. But I think a lot of people are sleeping on Okta. If you take a look at the video that I posted a couple of weeks ago, in fact, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. But Okta has a lot of things going on for it. And I highly recommend that you take a look at that video because everybody's talking about Chlor right now. It has a GPU marketplace. Uh, it's considered an AI coin. Okta has all of those things as well as staking service. They have... Uh, VPN service, they have C CPU rental, GPU rental. There's a lot of things going on on Okta, so definitely want to take a look at that video if you haven't already. 
But getting back to difficulty and profitability and the price of the coins right now, it's pretty rough. And, you know, if you're at 13 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, I feel for you. I really do, especially if you're paying more than that. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at profitability at 20 cents per kilowatt hour. So a 4090 is going to get you 39 cents a day on Dynex, but on Nexa, negative 15 cents. And if you take a look at a 3070, wow, where is it? Did I miss it? There it is. So at 20 cents, or yeah, let's change that again. At 20 cents, even Dynex is negative. So, you know, if you're mining at, at no profit, I understand the mentality that, yeah, if you're not selling the coin right now, then perhaps it still makes sense to mine. But in my opinion, if it costs you more to mine than it does to just buy it, then my preference would just be to buy it. But the reason that I'm able to continue mining is because my electric rate is so low. So I'm probably somewhere at about seven cents per kilowatt hour with my solar included. So that changes profitability to 30 cents a day on China or 30 cents a day in Chlor, 27 cents a day in Nexa, which is a lot better than break even or, or negative, right? But there's a lot of new people to the channel and I don't think that everyone is aware. So I want to cover just a couple of things. So when I first started the channel, I, I made a couple of videos about my DIY solar arrangement here. This is the first one. This is DIY solar powered crypto mining farm, 7,500 watts under 3,000 detailed parts list. So the first one basically just explains everything that I bought and where I bought it from. The second video is this one here, part two DIY solar powered crypto mining farm under 3,000 wiring explained. And in this one, we go pretty far into detail on how to read your electric bill to figure out how much solar you need or how much you can offset your electric bill based on how much solar you purchase. And then we go into a detailed explanation of how to calculate that, as well as a detailed explanation on understanding the relationship between watts, amps, and volts, and how that correlates to wiring your solar panels and perhaps which inverters are compatible with the solar panels that you're looking at purchasing. So if you've been on the fence considering whether or not solar is a viable option for you, I think most people would assume that it is not worth investing in simply because of the upfront cost. However, if you go the route that I did and you purchase the same equipment that I did and you do the installation yourself like I did, then I think you're gonna come out ahead uh, by a considerable margin and this is going to allow you to continue to mine while everyone else has to shut off and that's the situation that we were in after the merge I installed the solar probably right as the middle of September so right around the time of the merge happened and then I wasn't able to get my uh, net meter from the energy provider until the very very end of September so October was my first full month of being able to utilize the solar and that's what allowed me to a continue to mine but b continue to make content for you guys and if we go and take a look at my solar system <laughs> it feels so weird saying solar system I know that's probably not the white right way to describe it but anyways um, if we take a look at how it's been performing lately, it's doing really, really well. So yesterday it produced 45 kilowatt hours. A couple of days before that, I hit an all time high at 46.4 kilowatt hours. And since I've installed it, uh, it saved me about $643 in my electric bill. Uh, I produced almost 5,000 kilowatt hours so far. And so far today, it saved me $3.10 but you know we're only at 15 kilowatt hours for the day so you know multiply that by three 
it's it's saving me roughly about nine ten dollars a day now it hasn't always done that because you know if we take a look at the months here uh, you can see last month was pretty good uh, in fact probably the best month that I've had so far but we're not even all the way through this month and we're pretty close to breaking that record now the month before that mm, it was okay month before that it's like January or December uh, actually that'd be January let's go back to 2022 so December was the worst month and then this is November this would be October so in October we hit 842 kilowatt hours produced and if we compare that to last month we we broke that so you know I would assume that over the next six months it's going to do extremely well and much better than it's performed so far and again, you know, going back to whether or not it's worth it to install solar to offset your electrical cost for mining, if you're looking at buying GPUs right now and you have the ability to install your own solar, I think you should probably be looking at solar before purchasing more equipment. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm just a guy on the internet. What do I know? Anyway, so just want to wrap up with talking about ironfish real quick so i put out a video on ironfish tokenomics about two weeks ago uh let's see where is it somewhere yeah there it is so this was about two weeks ago and obviously we know the tokenomics look pretty awful um but having said that, I think a lot of people are still excited about mining it on launch day because they assume that difficulty is going to be low. And depending on where they launch the price of the coin on the exchanges, it could be extremely lucrative. And there's a lot of videos today. Uh, we've got Rabid Mining has had three videos back to back on mining ironfish. Uh, if we take a look at red panda mining he also put out a video on how to mine iron fish we've also got the hobbyist miner uh, put out a video today on iron fish and so for that reason I haven't made an updated video I think these guys have done an excellent job covering um, how to get a wallet address what pools to mine um, but I do want to talk about the fact that there seems to be a little bit of manipulation with how it's being launched um, specifically with SRB miner and hero miners pool basically giving you triple the hash rate so there's there's a document floating around with speculation on how much hash rate they expect on mainnet launch and I think that was around 120 terahash but if you take a look at mining pool stats right now we're already sitting at 161 terahash and we're not even in mainnet yet this is still testnet this is everybody testing getting ready so the day that you're watching this it's launching and I'm assuming that we're probably gonna be somewhere around 500 terahash or more now maybe less maybe a lot more but as far as profitability is concerned I'm still going to attempt to throw my entire farm at it and I just wanted to talk to you about strategy on the mainnet launch. So everybody's been talking about overclocks for uh, Ironfish and me personally I don't know if I'm going to be that concerned with overclocks on the very first day. And the reason I say that is because if it is extremely lucrative to mine it on mainnet launch day then I want to get, garner as much of the coin as I possibly can. So, like in this example here, we're currently on SRB miner and we're pointed to Hero Miners. I wanted to test the 3x hash rate compared to the other pools. And you can see these 3070 Ti's are sitting at about 9 giga hash at about 75 to 85 watts. And right now, I am rocking core offset of 300. Uh, Let's see, your locked core 1550 and memory locked at 810. But what I'll most likely be doing is removing the core offset of 300 and then probably setting the core to 1600, maybe more, depending on which GPU and whether or not it can handle that. But 
I saw earlier whenever I changed those numbers that I was sitting at about 9.5 giga hash and pulling about 100 watts. So I, I'm not going to go balls to the walls and, and use 200 watts per 3070 Ti, but I am going to push them a little bit harder than this, this because I do want to garner as much coin as I possibly can. So, you know, maybe a good strategy, maybe not. Time will tell. And as far as, you know, what we expect the price of the coin to be on launch, uh, again, going back to this document that's floating around, I think they're speculating that it's going to launch at about $10 per coin. And I expect a significant dump immediately following that. So, you know, again, not financial advice, just my own personal opinion. If it launches at 10, I would think within the first week it's going to dump down to $3, maybe less. If it launches at $15, you know, maybe it comes down to 5 bucks. But if it launches at $1.50, you know, maybe it goes up to $3 in a week. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know. Those are just kind of my expectations. But hopefully it works out for all of us. But... I appreciate you guys watching, man. If you would do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe on your way out, and I'll see you on the next one.